Hello, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at a mid-1960s K model 703. Uh, this is an amp that a customer has brought to me. Um, he wants to make this amp a little safer, and the reason for that is uh, this is one of the amps uh, from the 60s that is often referred to as a Widowmaker. Um, that means it has a series uh, filament. Um, all, all of the filaments for the tubes are in series, and they come directly off the AC with no uh, power transformer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a three-prong cord on it to make it a bit safer and uh, take the opportunity to uh, take a look at the guts and, uh, and maybe even listen to the sound at the end. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, uh, stick around and we'll take a look. Here's the back of the amplifier and uh, as you can see it's pretty simple. Uh, there are three inputs um, and they're even numbered which is a bit, bit funny. Number one, number two, and number three has a volume and a um, tone control with the on-off switch on the tone control. Um, again, this thing uh, has a two-prong cord at the moment, which we're gonna change to a three, uh, which is gonna make it a heck of a lot safer. Um, usually, when you do this with a Widowmaker, um, it's important to note that uh, anytime you plug this amp in, um, in the future, after you put the three-prong cord on, you still have to be mindful that wherever you're plugging it in, uh, has to have a good ground. Uh, if your wall outlets, if your sockets um, just have a hole there and they go to nothing, for instance, and it's not actually going to a ground, um, you know, some sort of grounded pipe or, or you know, older homes uh, may not even have a good ground on the socket. So that's something that you'll want to confirm uh, before you uh, plug it in and just run with it for too long thinking that you're good to go. At, at least one thing that you will know in the future is that when you plug it in with a three prong that your polarization will be correct. So that in itself is going to make it a little safer but uh, the fact that there's a ground on it will make it uh, even safer still. Uh, but, but that's another good thing to note that you need to make sure that your ground uh, wherever you're plugging it in is an actual ground. Um, but yeah, let's open this thing up and uh, check out the insides. Okay, here we have the back door off and a couple things we can see already is that the cabinet is constructed entirely of um, real plywood. So this isn't um, uh, this isn't like a particle board or anything like that. It's actually, actually plywood. Even the back door, uh, which we have taken off here, uh, is made of real plywood. And you can see someone has even uh, marked the back door uh, in... Uh, and a chalk stick. The tube complement on one of these amps is uh, a 35Z5 GT. That'll be the rectifier. Um, the here's the power tube. Let's see. Actually, uh, it might be a little difficult to get out. I don't think it's ever been out before, but I can check here. There is a. Um, there's a handy little schematic on the inside. It's a 50L6 and a 12AU6. And I'm not sure if you can see the schematic inside there. That might come in a bit handy. We'll see, but it's always nice to see those intact. Uh, the speaker, um, let's see, we've got a code here. I don't know if that code is gonna do us any good in dating the amp. Transformer has a code though. And it is uh, 9186229. So this amp was made, tw uh, at least the transformer was, uh, the 29th week of 1962. Not sure if you can see that there, but there it is. Let's see. So yeah, let's get the, uh, as you can see, the underside of the tubes there. Everything is labeled. I guess I could have just looked at the labels. But let's open up the uh, chassis and check out the inside now. Okay, uh, here are the guts of the amp and uh, one thing that we notice right off the bat, we do have a transformer here. Uh, this is providing uh, isolation and it actually steps up the voltage uh, for the plates of the tubes. Um, so that does provide us a little bit of protection already. Now the, the filaments of, of the tubes, uh, that is the heaters, are, are still uh, series. Um, they're still in series right off of the 120 AC. So, um, so that 
that is still a danger. However, this isolation transformer is, is good to see because that at least provides us some protection already. Um, so those of you who, who say that the 703 doesn't have an isolation transformer, um, here is the isolation transformer. It actually is shown on the schematic as well, uh, but we're going to make this even more safe by putting in that three prong and that's going to take care of the fact that, um, um, that our filaments are series filaments. And uh, if anything disastrous ever did come, ha ever did happen with this, if you know something came loose and laid down on the chassis, uh, if it didn't blow a fuse immediately, um, the ground provided by the ground uh, plug will be a better ground than your body. So um, that should scoop up all the uh, stray electrons and take them to the house ground instead of uh, instead of going through your heart and killing you. So uh, let's. Um, Let's put in that three prong cord, and then we'll take a we'll take a close a little bit of a closer look inside. Uh, a couple other little things before we move on. Actually, um, I did find the code on the speaker, um, and it was uh, kind of right under my nose. Nine eighteen three seventeen uh, three is nineteen sixty three, the seventeenth week of nineteen sixty three. Uh, found a couple other codes here as well. Uh, Two forty sixty three uh, twenty two. So this is the twenty second week. Of 1963, um, our pot is 137, which is for CTS uh, 63, 15th week of 1963. So this amp is pretty much, uh, and there's the pot. Uh, this amp is pretty much right, right smack around uh, the first first quarter of uh, 1963. Um, and the other thing I notice is that, uh, and the schematic shows this as well. Uh, let's actually get a better look at the schematic. Okay, I realize this might be a slightly difficult to see here, but we'll do our best. Um, so you can see here, here's our, our plug. Um, our plug goes directly to the switch and uh, all along the line here. And the other end uh, goes to our isolation transformer and also to our series filaments. Um, the problem is there's no fuse anywhere in line here. So if... if um, if something did happen and uh, you know the current spiked, uh, if uh, one of these wires, you know, God forbid, came loose and was just laying on the chassis, uh, there would be nothing to nothing to burn up um, by way of a fuse. Um, I suppose if something did happen, it's possible that one of these uh, one of the heaters in the tubes would would burn out and act as a fuse. And maybe that's what they're counting on here, but um, I'm not so sure that's that's the greatest of ideas. Or I guess they're maybe counting on also this this uh, uh, this inline resistor maybe burning up um, if you have a big problem. But uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna rely on that, and we're gonna put a um, we're gonna put a fuse in line here internally uh, to make this a little safer as well. The customer didn't request that, um, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, but at least you can see the. The schematic that came with the amp here. I'm not sure if this is any different than any of the ones that you're going to find online. I haven't looked to be honest, uh, but we may as well zoom in here to get uh, get a record of that. Uh, but it does say K Musical Instrument Company, uh, 1640 West Walnut Street, Chicago, Illinois. Um, and that's Chicago 12. That would have been their sort of zip code at the time. Uh, model 703. And then there's a license notice over here. How to order parts. Um, and a very short parts list to follow. And then they've got their little cute little guarantee here at the bottom. Um, but yeah, since we've taken a look at that, um, let's move along and get the cord in and the fuse in. And I think we'll be pretty much done with this. This amp is actually in really good condition. It's um, it's very much uh, in original state. The screws um, haven't even they don't even seem to have been turned that much. Maybe once or twice in its in its history. Um, but you can usually tell if one's been you know taken apart a lot and worked on a lot because. Um, you know the screws will just almost fall out of the, the cab whenever you turn them and th these were pretty tight in there still So I don't think they would ever been turned very much even so um, So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and do the things that we need to do to it um, We'll probably also clean the sockets with some cleaner uh, while we're here and uh, this one will be ready to go And we'll also uh, listen to it here at the end as well. So stick around for that 
Okay, we're back with this amp, and um, you can see here our three prong cord has been installed. Um, we've got a ground wire coming over to here. Um, here's our second wire, our neutral, and uh, here's our hot wire, the black, um, coming to the switch first. Uh, on the other side of the switch, uh, we have a we have a fuse here underneath that um, shrink tubing wired in series. So at least uh, now we have some sort of fuse. Um, so yeah, this, this amp is going to be a lot safer now since we have uh, th those two things. I uh, went through and uh, flowed a couple couple pieces of solder, um, a, a couple connections that looked a bit suspect as well, and uh, sprayed out all the input jacks and also sprayed out the, um, the sockets for the tubes. And um, now everything should be ready to go. Let's button her up and see what she sounds like. Okay, uh, here we are. We're gonna test this little guy out, and uh, in order to do the test, we're gonna use a um, Fender American Standard Telecaster, and uh, let's see what kind of tones we get. playing on this video a little bit um, I've cut my thumb wide open uh, with a uh, with a razor so That is a, uh, a 1963K Model 703.